and we're back and better than ever. Uh, took me a little smoke break, did a little uh, looking around on Facebook for a minute. I do need to do my fingernails before tomorrow. But uh, I decided since I was on a roll to go ahead and get a couple more of these terms out and about. Um, you know, and like I said, you don't have to watch it. Just listen to it, and maybe it will help you understand the uh, the terminology used and, uh, you know, uh, things about uh, Chapter 10, Gender and Aging. We'll get to aging, like, you know, in uh, the year 2025. <laughs> Thanks. Was that you? Okay. Thought I heard somebody knocking. All right. Back to... Um, we stopped at uh, slide 10. Hey, I'm surprised I went through uh, nine slides. Two of them were pictures and um, in an hour. <laughs> so anyway, um, hey, do what you love. And this is what I love is uh, spreading sociological knowledge, especially when it comes to gender. Um, all right, we stopped at gender inequality in global perspective. Now, back when we were doing uh, global stratification, one of the questions on the exam was, you know, what's the, the main way that people are stratified all over the world? Answers gender. Um, well, here we go. Uh, the book finally, you know, we talked about minority groups in the race and ethnicity chapter. You know, talking about uh, people, it's not numbers, but power. Uh, as in, for example, right now, there are more females in the United States than males, numerically. But when it comes to power, males have more power than females. Uh, therefore, females are considered a minority group. Um, it applies to women that describes their inability to gain equal access to power, property, and prestige. Page 297. Even though y'all's page numbers might be off, I don't know. Um, you know, I might have used the, the uh, teacher book. Anyway, um, power, property, and prestige. There is not an equal access. I think earlier uh, in the first uh, video about gender, part one, uh, someone said, you know, now that uh, men and women have equal access to education, I was like, uh, they're still not equal access to education. Um, uh, there. All right. So, and then it said, do you think men or women are smarter? Ah, uh, I don't know how to measure that, to gauge that, to know. I mean, you know, women are smarter at this and men are smarter at this. Uh, I am smart at sociology, but I am not smart at chemistry. You know, is it because of my gender? Uh, is it because of my biology? Is it because of, uh, uh, you know, me being half cat? I don't know. That was a joke. <laughs> All right, where are my cats? They, they fed. All right, so the next bullet point says, how did females become a, min a minority group? So how did, uh, oh, I could go on and on about this forever. I'm trying to use these videos as a practice for me to rein it in and not ramble so much uh, and, and to speak slower because I know I talk fast and I ramble all the time. So I'm working on those two things. Be patient. Well, I don't know, semester's halfway gone. All right. Uh, so the question is, how did females become a minority group? How did it, uh, you know, end up to where women have less power than men? The answer, patriarchy. Okay. And what is patriarchy? Uh, patriarchy is when men dominate society. Uh, and this usually centers on reproduction. Okay. Now, here's some research that I've done. Now, once again, you don't have to agree. 
You don't have to disagree. You don't have to have an opinion. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm just here to, to influence it. You know, open your mind just a little bit. You can hear different perspectives that are different from your own. And then go back to believe in whatever you believe in your heart. You know, I don't want to change people. I just want to tell you what's out there. You know, these are the possibilities. These are, you know, different perspectives that other people might think. And then you go along your business thinking however you want, you know. Um, and also, once again, some people say, you know, well, that's your opinion. You know, that's not fact. That's your opinion. And actually, when I, you know, say stuff like, for example, women are a minority group, that's not an opinion. It's a fact. It's, it's based in social scientific research and evidence that it is a fact that men have more power than women in the United States, for example, or all over the world. So that's not an opinion. Now, if I were to say, um, you know, this candle is better than yours because I can use it as a candle and an ashtray. All right, that's an opinion. Because you know good and well, this, you know, okay, look at that, look at that. Yeah. Uh, you know you got a better candle than I do. <laughs> that's an opinion. But a fact is, uh, you know, based on empirical data, research, reliable, valid, etc. All right, here we go. Um, so, patriarchy. How did females become a minority group? And the answer is patriarchy. So, what's patriarchy? Patriarchy is male dominance. All right. And they say it centers on human reproduction. And this is where I go with some research that I have done. You don't have to believe it, but this is just some research that I, I have uh, come across and I found uh, pretty um, interesting. All right. Let's go way back in the day, way back into cavemen, cave women, cavemen days. You know, it's called cavemen, you know, you don't ever hear cave women. <laughs> Caveman days, all right? You know, where, where they got a fire, you know, at least they got fire. Uh, and um, and they live in a cave and, and they they go out and uh, they, they grow vegetables and they reproduce and they have children and, and these kind of things. All right. Well, first of all, the diet that cavemen ate. All right. I don't know if y'all know this. But, gosh, everybody going to attack me. But this is truth. All right. Individuals, human beings, can survive on a vegan diet. We do not have to have meat in order to survive. I know about protein. I know. But there are things that you can eat that has protein in them that are not from meat. You know, muscles of animals. Okay. All right, so back in the day, caveman times, uh, we had, uh, you know, stratification based on gender where women, their jobs were to stay at the hut or at the cave, keep the fire going, you know, grow the vegetables and, and harvest them, uh, have the babies, feed the babies, have another baby. Could you imagine having like a, a five-year-old that's still breastfeeding on your back while you got a three-year-old on one breast and a six-month-old on the other breast and you're trying to keep the fire going and you sitting there harvesting carrots? Difficult back in them days. It's hard. It's hard. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty hard. All right. So what were the men doing? Well, the men, hello, mother, you're, you're uh, just now joining me. I am discussing why is it that men have more power than women? Does it go back to uh, reproduction in the cavemen times? Yeah, I'm going way out there. So here we go. I just explained what women did back in cavemen times, <laughs> you know, they, 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 and they having babies, they pregnant, they breastfeeding, they got the little children strapped to the back while they, they dig hole, holes in the ground, 
plant the carrots, keep the fire going, clean, you better, I don't know, sweep the dirt. Ah, a lot of work. Okay. What were the men doing? Well, they wasn't feeding the babies because, you know, we, we, we are based on breast milk back then. You know, and yes, men cannot produce breast milk. Today, men can use formula or breast milk that's put into a bottle and given to anybody. You know. um, but uh, back in the day, so they couldn't feed the babies. They they couldn't, you know, have the babies. Uh, I mean, they, they did, you know, they were 50% of making the baby, but actually having the baby, they did not do. Um, what about taking care of the baby? You know, way, way. Maybe, hopefully they did. Um, you know, uh, hunting. Thank you, mother. That's getting to my subject. I don't ever call you mother. I call you mama. Me, me. Me, me. And, uh, you missed the part, me, me, about vegans. As in, you, you can live on a diet without meat. So you don't really need hunting. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna blow your mind. All right, so. What happened was men needed something to do <laughs> besides procreating. So they created weapons. Hey, you got to protect the tribe. They created weapons out of rocks and, and spears and knives and stuff. And then they took these weapons and they were like, hey, let's go hunt down a tiger. Really, really. Let's go kill a rhinoceros. I don't know, making up stuff. Uh, let's get down an antelope. I don't know, they're pretty fast. Um, all right, so let's say that the men created weapons which gave them the ability to go kill uh, an animal and bring that animal back to the, to the cave. And everybody like, hallelujah. We can, we, well, they ain't got no refrigerators or freezers. They can't keep it forever. You got to eat it once you got it, right? And how much meat could one tiger produce for a family? Hey, maybe they had a, friends and neighbors. All right. So first of all, it gave men power to be able to create these weapons. Then they used weapons to go kill animals and bring it back to the cave and it was it was like thanksgiving it was a special occasion when they killed a deer or a, or a meat an animal and it was a special occasion and everybody's whoo look at them look how cool they are power they had power for killing animals power for making weapons and then let's say that a tribe went uh at another tribe they're gonna fight you know, for territory or for the women or whatever they're going to fight for. The men made the weapons. I'm sure the women helped too. The men made the weapons and they go out and they can fight other tribes and win and, and skin their heads and bring them home and be like, you know, we won the battle. So they were more powerful. Interesting. Have you ever thought about that? Now, this is just, just a theory, okay? Like I said, you don't have to believe it or, or disagree or have any opinion. But what if the power differential is based around these things that went on in caveman times, such as, you know, uh, making weapons, fighting in war, and killing animals was seen as, seen as more prestigious than having babies, breastfeeding, gardening, making little, you know, little toys for the babies to play with. Oh, could you imagine having like seven children and they all under the age of eight? Oh, God. But that was seen as less prestigious, less powerful, because that's natural. Because women are just naturally supposed to take care of children. That was a double face palm. Side note, you know you don't have to procreate. We got plenty of people in this world. You don't have to. And you can adopt. All right. Anyway, uh, that's just one uh, reason or one explanation out of thousands of why 
Uh, there's, you know, gender inequality across the globe where men are more powerful than women. Is it because of patriarchy, which is basically defined as men being powerful over society? Uh, and then does it center on human reproduction? Because let's say, for example, and, and this is what comes up when I teach this. Uh, nowadays, 2019, we, we got a heterosexual couple male and female, and, and the, the woman just gives birth to the, to the infant. Cool. All right. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, the woman has to be the one to take care of the baby because she's the one with the breast milk. Well, not all babies can, can tolerate breast milk. Not all breasts can make milk. Um, we got, we got formula now. It's real expensive, but we got formula. Uh, you can pump breast so you can have a, a splurge, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A stock of breast milk for, for months. And then you can take the breast milk, put it in a bottle, give it to a man, and the man can hold the bottle and feed the baby. Do you know that in air, some tribes, I don't know which tribe, and I don't even know where in the, in the world. Anyway, uh, the men teach the children how to eat solid foods. What? This is how they do it. Because the children go from breastfeeding to eating solid foods. And when I say solid foods, I'm talking about like uh, an apple smashed up or a peach or something squishy. All right. The men take the squishy food. And they place it on their chest. And so the baby is looking for the mother's breast for the, for the milk. And instead, they find the squished up food on the man's chest. And therefore, the man can teach the baby to eat solid foods. Uh, those are just some different examples. I mean, I've, I've heard it for decades, you know, about uh, the the whole reproduction reasons why uh, men are this way and women are this way is because of uh, procreation, because, you know, women have babies and the men don't. Uh, it's, I mean, hell, there's even instances where men can be pregnant, like literally grow a baby inside their belly. I saw it on a picture. God, don't cite me though. Um, you know, today, uh, two women can, can go to a sperm bank and, and get sperm and have children. Uh, you know, you don't have to have a, a, you don't have to have a male and a female in a relationship to have children. You can have two males, two females, intersex and a female. Um, it can go on and on the variety of, of ways, uh, that you can, um, have families today in today's society. Okay. Uh, and it's not based on breast feeding and it's not based on, um, you know, uh, who can hear the baby cry the loudest. You know, this story with that, but I'm going to go on. Uh, and Oh, here's, here's a picture of this woman. Um, it says, uh, because only women give birth, they assumed tasks associated with home and child care, while men hunted and performed other survival tasks that required greater strength, speed, and absence from home. And that picture was taken in Bangladesh, and she's got like a four-year-old asleep on her back while she's digging up grass. Oh! <laughs> Fun times. Okay. Uh, global violence against women. So, so we're talking globally. Um, I'd like to talk about, uh, for a moment, honor killings. Okay, honor killings is the term. Uh, we actually have a little video that we could show. You know I never get to the videos in class, but maybe we will. Um, all right, honor killings is when a woman who is thought to have brought disgrace on her family is killed by a male relative. Really, really. Uh, you know, this this goes on in the world today. Uh, today, 2019. For example, well, not for example. This is one of the main reasons why honor killings are committed. Is because of sex outside of marriage 
even rape. So if a woman gets raped, not her fault, not by her own doings, she's raped. The male family members of the raped uh, survivor stone her to death. She was the one that was raped. She was the one that was, she did not ask for this. This, this was brought upon her, this horrid act. And then her male family members kill her. Um, you know, pregnant women stoned to death, burned alive, honor killings. They still happen today in this world. It's a problem. Uh, the, um, the video that I have to show is talking about, um, uh, let's see, it was 2014. I know that's dated, but 2014, Pakistan, uh, CNN.com talking about honor killings, honor murders. Uh, a woman who is thought to have brought disgrace on her family is killed by a male relative. All right, let's just say that that woman grows up to be an adult and she never gets married. They'd go out and kill her because that's disgraceful. Do you see the inequality worldwide between men and women? Oh, Rainbow, Rainbow's back. Hang on. You want to say hello? You want to say hello? Oh. Sorry, he's he's eating. He's eating right now. So uh, he's got to go. He said he's starving. Uh, he's been out there catching them tigers. All right. Uh, next, um, next slide goes to uh, foot binding. Took me a minute. Foot binding. All right, there's a picture of it from 2002. It's when uh, women in areas take their feet. Let's see. Okay, okay, here we go. Take their feet, like this is the pinky toe, and they, they curl them up. They curl them up and make their, their feet look small, tiny. They, they want small feet, tiny feet. So they curl them toes up and they wrap them and wrap them. Even when they're babies, they sometimes cut off their pinky toes. So their feet will look smaller. It says, tiny feet were a status symbol. So this was a good thing to have tiny feet. Having tiny feet, you know, forced tiny feet, made it difficult for women to walk. Small feet indicated that a woman's husband did not need his wife's labor. Therefore, it's a status symbol. So these women deform their feet to the point where they can't walk in order to show society that they have enough money that she doesn't have to work. Patriarchy. <gasps> Hello, Deshaun. I am discussing, you just uh, joined in on foot binding. Uh, we're talking about global inequality of women, and I am on a roll. I am going on my, this is my fourth video I've made today. Thank you for joining. Um, and, uh, my mama was on here, but she, she jumped off, I think. All right. So anyway, we're talking about 2002. We're not talking about 1847. We're talking about the year 2002. This woman's foot is all turned up and binded to where she can't walk. And why? Because it's a status symbol to show that she doesn't have to work and they're rich and, and everybody looks at them and they're so happy. Uh, to make the feet even smaller, sometimes the baby's feet were broken and wrapped tightly. Some baby's toes were cut off, 
Now, foot binding was banned by the Chinese government in 1911, but continued to be a practice, you know, up until today. You know, like in these small little villages, they still do foot binding, even though it's, it's against the law. All right, let's move on. Ah, here we go. Social problems. You know, that's, that's my next, uh, uh, you know, number one item of uh, discussion. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to get my notes. All right. Because the, the, the thing, the, um, it says social problems. We talked about honor killings. All right, here we go. I can just, uh, there's a list of them. That's why it's not on the PowerPoint. Um, what's going on globally with women? It says globally and in the United States. Uh, all right, so we, we got dire poverty, severe lack of rights in many cultures and nations, AIDS, forced marriage, rape and other violence, enslavement in sex industries. They say it's societal failure to recognize and develop women's full human potential. Many a times women are, um, you know, I guess you could say narrowed down to only being a sex object without human feelings, you know, sex slave. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on. Uh, yikes. It says in the, un okay, in the United States, there's this, this thing they call the girl's ghetto. The girl's ghetto. All right. In the United States, women are still shunted into the girl's ghetto. Guess what type, type of jobs are in the girl's ghetto? Housekeeping, retail trades, insurance, real estate, service positions such as secretary, receptionist, telephone operator, clerk. About 60% of working women in the U.S., are employed in these kind of jobs. 60% are, are in jobs in the girls' ghetto. Now, how much would a secretary make, money-wise, versus an engineer or a CEO? Or, you know, and I know Oprah Winfrey's a CEO. I know there are some women out there that are CEOs. We're talking about the average, average woman. And we got 60% of working women in the girls' ghetto. Next slide. Woo! Might need to take a cigarette break. Next slide is gender inequality. Okay. Uh, first thing you need to know is sexism okay being a sexist you know uh having behavior that you know being uh you know promoting sexism i know one person in power in the united states that sure does promote sexism anyway uh sexism entire range of attitudes beliefs policies, laws, behaviors, discriminating against women or against men on the basis of their gender. Yes, sexism includes negativity towards men because of their gender. Example, you want one? Heightism. Heightism. Taller men get more jobs than shorter men. Taller men are treated differently and better than shorter men. It's not fair. There's nothing you can do about your height. Nothing. And people treat men differently based on their height. So that is a form of sexism. So when when you hear you know people being sexist, it could be a woman telling sexist remarks about men. It could be a woman 
telling sexist remarks against other women. You know, it's not, you know, oh, woe is women are the victims. No, women perpetuate sexism just as much as men do. Okay. Uh, next item of business is power and male hegemony. You may have been wondering what that word was. Male hegemony. Another word for male dominance. Uh, another word for, um, you know, uh, men being the dominant group. Uh, male hegemony is another word for male power, male privilege. Okay. Um, let's see. Why do I have that on here? Uh, yeah, it's in relations. Uh, and this is your PowerPoint slide. In relations marked by hegemony, male dominance. Uh, uh, oh, okay. This domination is achieved by a combination of political and ideological means. Remember, I have, man, we have, did you hear me say man? That's funny because not everybody's a man. I'm working on that. Uh, the language used, you know. Anyway, y'all, <laughs> y'all know that I have taught over and over about ideology and how these belief systems get into our society and people believe them as truth. You know, that, that women are weak and men are strong and people believe that ideology. And they're like, yeah, because my mom and daddy told me. You know, my grandma told me, so yeah, it's true. I, I, women can deadlift 185 pounds just as easily as a man can. Um, ideological means it's ideology. It's it's a it's when when somebody gets in power and they take their power in order to manipulate the followers into believing something. Like men are stronger than women. You know, they make up this what's up, rainbow. They make up this ideology, you know, that men are better. And then this powerful person tells everybody else that, and everybody else is like, oh well, well, he's popular. Well, he's in power. Well, well, he's got all the awards. Well, he should know. Then if he says men are more powerful, then yeah, men are more powerful. Even people victimized by them, as in women, believe that it's true, okay? It's, it's not just men that are doing all this, uh, you know, um, inequal, in, unequal power. It's not just men. It's women, too. Men and women both work together to recreate or generate and recreate and reproduce an ideology that says there is a difference between men and women and that men have more power than women. Male hegemony. So male hegemony keeps on going. What's up, Gimpy? Male hegemony keeps on going because men and women and non-binary and intersex and any other gender that we can talk about gives way to this ideology and they believe it. Sorry. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, this is part, these are stereotypes. Um, in parts of the U S ideologies that portray men as soldiers, athletic heroes, and managerial leaders and women as homemakers, nurturing spouses. This reinforces male hegemony. Um, you know, many women have attitudes that are prejudicial to women, causing them to undervalue the work of other women. Uh, many women were motivated to avoid success, fearing that the more ambitious and successful they became, the less feminine they'd be. stereotypes. It's an in inaccurate 
conception of people. Okay. It's not real. It's, it's wrong. Stereotypes. Um, stereotypes often make it easier to justify unequal treatment. Because if you can say, oh, oh, women are just all crazy, then you can justify, you know, oh, women wanting better wages. They're crazy. I wouldn't dare, you know, they can't go dig a ditch like a man can. I bet I could. Let's see, traditional stereotypes about women, naturally passive, domestic, envious. All right, 35 minutes in. Uh, all right, here we go. More along the lines of gender inequality in the U.S. All right, let's talk about feminism, the F word. Ah! Guess what? Anybody can be a feminist, okay? Feminists do not hate men, okay? Feminism, they say, there's three uh, words, I mean, there's three listings here. Feminism is a view that biology is not destiny, that stratification by gender is wrong and should be resisted, they view that men and women should be equal. Now, what's so scary about that? They, feminists do not want women to be better. Feminists want equality, to be treated fairly, no matter what your genitals are or your chromosomes, to be treated as a human being. All right? Uh, this is an idea of feminism that I put on the PowerPoint slide. It says, competition, toughness, calloused emotions, and independence, those represent male qualities. What if those male qualities were replaced with cooperation, connection, openness, interdependence? You see what I'm saying? So feminism is trying to equal out what's going on by saying, you know, instead of uh, always competing, which, hell, society is is a competitive uh, place. Uh, competition is big for society, for U.S. But um, instead of competing, why don't we cooperate? You know? Uh, instead of having stoic emotions and, and act like you are, you know, uh, you know, to, to, you don't cry because you're a man. And look at my face. I'm looking like I'm trying to talk like a man, too. <laughs> That's funny. Um, men can cry. They got emotions. They're human. Uh, I'll ask y'all tomorrow. We shall discuss. Is it more difficult to be a man or a woman? I want to know what you think. Let me see if we're gonna if this is a good stopping point. I think so. Let's see. Yeah, okay. This is a good stopping point. So in the end of this 38 minute broadcast, uh, you know, think about is it more difficult to be a man or a woman in US today? And don't nobody say, it depends on the individual. Come on! I'm asking for, you know, <laughs> uh, some some something with some thoughts behind it. Well, thank you for hanging out and listening. And uh, hopefully I'm getting all of my uh, stirred up emotions out right now. So tomorrow I won't ramble so bad. All right, we'll see y'all. Hey, I might do another one in another live video in a minute, but kind of getting tired now. <laughs> Have a good one.